All right, welcome to the exciting last section of the course uh, with me, Victor Temprano, your mapping guide. Um, we're <laughs> we're going to go through like a lot of the coolest part of the, this is the part of the course that I've been excited about um, trying to get to. You know, it's all fun making interfaces and filtering, but bleh, do that every day. And, you know, telling you about data is really fun, but I also get stuck trying to figure out cool data for us to find. So I'd much rather make some cool-looking, fun, interesting maps, and that's the kind of stuff we're going to do here. I'm not going to go over in, like, huge detail everything about all of these. There's obviously a lot of topics, as you can see. But I'm going to go over, like, some of the key points I've learned, a few of the things that are going to help you get done probably what you're trying to get done, as well as, like, resources to know kind of where to go if you do need to do more. I really want to help you make the coolest maps that you can make and then like share them with me because I'd love to see them um, and I'd love to get inspired by them. So, you know, you know, be a nerd with me and let's uh, let's have some fun. So I'm not going to put uh, detail into each of these. We're just going to start going right into them. So as you can see, we're going to go over things like heat maps. Um, heat maps help you display like dense information uh, in, a, in a somewhat more comprehensible way or a different way that people are used to seeing. And heat maps can also be done quite a lot of ways with a lot of gradients, a lot of different colors and filters and stuff. Um, you can also make them dynamic where they change with data. Now we're also going to do clustering. Clustering is where you get markers. If you have a lot of markers on a map, you're able to have them all uh, you know, come together and with numbers rather than just like thousands of markers you can say oh there's a thousand in that location I'll click the button and then it'll show me a few of those uh, so a lot of these you know geolocation is finding a location of a of a address routing is very important for a lot of apps animation you might want to make some cool little effects uh, sometimes you'll be working with big data and you gotta know more to do uh, more stuff to do sometimes you want users to edit so I think I hit a lot of the main topics of things you'll be building um, so Enough of me going on a spiel about how awesome this all is and, you know, big introduction. Let's just get into heat maps. Um, it's a good place to start. And we can actually use what we've already done from our last sections uh, because it's probably pretty conducive to a heat map. We can see that there is a, an area here that is uh, quite heavy. And I'd like to see actually just the, you know, it's just dark. All it is is dark. Uh, even just having opacity is almost a kind of heat map because the places get darker there's a gradient almost at work but we can make something something way cooler than this so let's head to leaflet plugins and uh, we're gonna find pretty quick some stuff on heat maps so where are we gonna find it let's just look up heat maps there it is right in front of me all right so there's a lot of different potential uh, libraries to use for all this stuff but one of the easiest is going to be this leaflet heat that's a really quickly uh, it just gets working quite quickly, easy to use. So tiny, fast, heat, leaflet heat map plugin. Okay, so it uses some other library as well. Uh, so why don't all we have to do is get leafletheat.js from dist. Okay, we'll do that, and we'll just copy that and get the raw version. Save the link. Okay. And then we'll just make sure we include it. So it looks really easy to use, right? So all we have to do here, these are just latitudes, longitudes, and then whatever the intensity is of a particular point that we're adding. So, okay, maybe that's a little more confusing than it uh, seems right off the bat. So I just have our big mess of code here still. You can see I'm separating out the sections, so you probably have a neater thing going on than this. But there's the big mess, and now we'll head back into our index.html, and I'm going to load leaflet-heat.js. Okay, so we got a leaflet heat thing going on. Great. Now we have we want to use this, and uh, basically we need to figure out what we're and what we're going to do for intensity. So maybe for intensity we could put magnitude, or maybe we could say Oh, how many are in a, in a certain area. So I was originally thinking, okay, maybe we can just make it check, like, how many are in a certain area. But actually, that's a little tricky because then we have to, blah, like, check a certain radius area. And, 
whatever, why don't we just uh, make it the magnitude? We'll make each of them have a magnitude value that's equal to their magnitude, and then we can see where the most intense earthquakes are, and we can do it without having to do a whole bunch of complicated work. And the reason I'm avoiding that really complicated stuff is just, at least a little bit, is just um, so that you can actually just get up and running. Uh, your, he your heat map's going to have its own qualities, uh, and it's not going to be particularly the ones we're facing. So, okay, we have, that's the countries. We don't care about the countries. We're down in the earthquakes, and we have here our point to layer, which is creating this circle. Okay, so instead of a circle, uh, we're just going to, like, not do this at all. We're going to, you know, create these in a different way. We're not going to make it a GeoJSON. So let's just comment out this whole GeoJSON. Uh, and let's just do it ourselves. So we're going to do another JSON.features dot for each function feature. Obviously I could combine this into the same one we have up uh, up above, but that's okay. So I'm going to save our heat map points. And that's going to be an array. Just an array to match this one. So for each feature, what we're going to do is into heat map points, we're going to push another array. Oops, an array. And that's going to be uh, feature.geometry.coordinates zero and then one because we're trying to get the long longitude the latitude and then the intensity so the intensity is going to be in feature dot properties dot magnitude so i think it's called mag is that right properties mag there we are okay so right now i have these three elements i have the longitude the latitude and the intensity okay that sounds pretty good, and those are all getting pushed into that array. And then after, what we're going to do is just copy this bit, place it right here, and in place of this whole array that uh, it comes with, we're going to put our new one, and let's, uh, let's give it a whirl. See if we get a little bit of heat map situation going on. This looks like nothing happened. Okay, so what's the error? Do we have an error? We have, uh, okay, that's not, not important. So why don't we take a look at our heat maps points and see if it's showing up kind of what we expect it to be doing. Let's see here. So we have an array of three. That sounds about right. So let's try seeing. We can see that there's actually something weird going on down here. We can see there's some vague colors that you can just barely make out. That's suspicious to me. So maybe our classic trick of flipping the coordinates is going to bring those where they should be. Okay, there's something going on here. It's still not very visible, so that's an issue. Uh, maybe we can find some way to make those more intense. Let's see here. So this is great because they have 10,000 points, but we don't have nearly 10,000. We just have a few hundred, or just not even, sorry, we have like a few dozen at most. So max, min opacity, we want probably the min opacity to be more, or why don't we change the color gradient? Okay, that looks fun. We can maybe have it look a little different, uh, and maybe that'll show up a little easier. Let's change our color gradient. This is the one that maybe, maybe that's what they have started with, uh, this gradient, and maybe we can modify it. So first of all, let's just load it at our comma here. Uh, load it and see if it looks the same. And it does, okay. Let's change this blue to point 0.1 and the lime to point 0.2. Let's see what happens. So we're getting a little bit more color in there. Uh, so maybe we could even make this like really um, really extreme. And just change it. Okay, we got a little bit of heat map going on there. We also have, uh, maybe you can't really see it too well, maybe we could have a different opacity. So we have min opacity. Um, why don't we just make that one right off the bat? It might be too extreme, but we can at least see it then. All right, so that's uh, that's way too much. That's way too high. So instead, uh, what all it's doing is making them all maximumed out. So that's not actually the opacity of the points. So instead, let's get rid of this. And instead, we'll make it like 0.4. We'll change this back to 0.4 and 0.5. Six. Go with that. See how that ends up looking. All right, we have um, we have a little bit of a heat map going on, showing some different areas where you can see this 
what would be probably the ring of fire if we put enough of these earthquakes going around um, with volcanoes, and that's kind of cool. And we can see as we zoom in, they kind of break down, and these are breaking down according to how many are within the current map view. Obviously, we can't see the exact amounts as we hover, but our advanced toggle will still show the total number, even though they're not exactly the same um, geojsons as before. So we are doing great. So that's a very basic heat map. Now, just so that we do mess around a little bit with intensity, let's try to work on figuring out where the magnitude is the highest. So one of the things we can do is we need to make it, we need to figure out um, the highest point, the highest uh, amount that we're going to allow, which is going to be one. Usually one is the full opacity. And we have to figure out what our maximum and minimum are in terms of our magnitudes. So, okay, we have, uh, we already figured that out when we looked at making our sliding filter. Now we have some error has gone on with that. Range min and max cannot be equal. Oh, this is just because I s took away our little GeoJSON. Instead of having it happen here, let's have the min and max go on when we're seeing our features being made. Okay, so let's uh, now change that. And now all we have to do is just the same. We just have to copy all the same code. Sorry. From there. Oops. Bring it back, and instead of feature dot geometry, we're going to do feature dot properties dot mag. Okay, so now we have a min and max. So let's let's see if that's loading now properly. Okay, there we go. So our minimum to our maximum. So we can see our minimum is 0.97, our maximum is 6.6, .6, which is totally crazy. It's like very scary. And of course, it doesn't affect the map since we're not hooked up to the heat map. Um, our points aren't. We could dynamically change the heat map by just uh, adding and removing this heat layer and changing the heat map points as we drag. Uh, you can imagine how to put it together from our last section. So now uh, what we're going to do is kind of make this a ratio. So what we can do is find out, okay, so if we have our lowest one, 0.97, we can divide that. We're going to get that's 0.14. So within our little gradient, 0.14 is going to fall pretty far in the blue. I'm not concerned about making one right at zero. I'm okay having them fall in the in the blue there, even though it's not, you know, technically the zero point. Uh, 0.97 is low enough to be reasonable. So what we're going to try to do actually is we're going to take um, the total of whatever the current magnitude is of whatever feature we're on, we're iterating over. We're going to take that. We're going to divide it by 6.6, .6, and it's going to give us basically a percentage in between this uh, that we can use to determine the magnitude relative um, to things like minimum and maximum. Um, okay, so why don't we just do it, and we'll, we'll talk about it more as, as we do it. So we're going to have features.properties.mag, da da da, and we're going to divide that by 6.6. .6. Now, one more thing about this. If this was dynamic data, you would want to make sure that that 6.6 .6 is actually whatever the maximum is. You don't want to be dividing by the wrong number, so I wouldn't just want to divide by max here, because until the max has actually, until this has all been looped over and the max has been found, I don't really know what this number actually is. I only know it because we see it here. So this is only good for a more static approach. So okay, we still get something that's basically the same. So maybe what we'll do just to make sure that it's actually, you know, working kind of how we might want it to do, we'll output the magnitude here, okay, and uh, we'll divide by 6.6 .6 and just see to make sure that this is, you know, putting out the kind of numbers we expect it to be putting out. It's like 0.68 all the way, you know, okay, 5.1. Looks like, good, it's kind of in a general range. There's a lot of 0.4s, 0.3s, and there's a 1. Does that make sense? That's the highest one. Okay, but it's not really showing up very well. So we'll make 1 this, and we'll make 0.1 blue. We'll see if we get up something more extreme. There we go. So we can see that there are places where there's something closer to 1 occurring. Uh, the gradient is happening. So 
the map is not terribly different than our last one. Still runs down the side here, but we are going by a magnitude. Now, one more thing I wanted to look at gradients for heat maps. Uh, gradient heat map. There's a great little site that's just here, this uh, Microsoft site. And there's some really nice heat um, styles in different colors. And you can just copy paste this right in as an object. Very easy. So we'll just go with this. I kind of always have liked this one. Nice and crisp looking. It's interesting. Um, it's a little pixelated, but you get a really strongly uh, delineated heat map with this. And there's a lot of other ones over here. Why don't we take a look at uh, this deep sea? That's kind of cool. And these are just easy to try out and make sure you get the heat map uh, style that you really want. There we go. It's a little more techy, a little more cool. So, all right. Now, that's a little bit about heat maps. Uh, I hope you have a good time using them. And next, we're going to work on another way to kind of get your markers in there in a different way, and that's clustering. So, see you in the next episode. <laughs>